to make certain that, regardless of who else knows, the delegates sent from the states to the RNC will know that once they are there, they are legally unbound and can vote for any of the nominees, not only who their state bound them to vote for in their state primaries. This will make the RNC a very controversial event in the MSM, but more importantly, it could mean a very strong chance for Ron Paul to win the Republican Party nomination for their candidate for president. If this occurs, there is every hope in the world that Ron Paul will win the presidency of the U.S. and succeed in accomplishing his Reform America Now platform. However, ultimately, the cause is greater than any one man alone, and so we can only keep our hope alive that such an outcome as this continues to remain possible for now. Results prior to the 2012 election as I said, the audit the Fed bill was watered down, but did arm Congressman Ron Paul with enough ammo to continue his attacks on their fiat counterfeit system. As mentioned during the big bank bailout era, and in specific during the same lending window as TARP, the Toxic Asset Repossession Program, the Fed loaned between 10 billion and 15 billion U.S. dollars to various EU nations' central banks, which we can say in hindsight, pushed the loans of many of these nations up to levels requiring them to reform their national budgets, resulting in their cutting retirement funding austerity programs, which in turn has led to the ongoing riots. So, aside from Ron Paul exposing the Fed's initiating role in the European debt crisis, he has been able to accomplish little in preventing it from having occurred, but likewise has in no way benefited from it having done so either. Ron Paul, perhaps alone in Washington, D.C., is not to blame for the European debt crisis. He predicted it, and has predicted a return to a gold-based economic currency exchange method all along, and when these things inevitably occur, regardless of taxpayers trusting the Fed, and when regardless of the Fed exercising all its tools to postpone them, hyperinflation and the collapse of the dollar end up happening anyway, we should not blame Ron Paul for warning us. Ron Paul's devotion to the cause of liberty and truth is inspirational to everyone, and this includes the OWS movement, the Tea Party movement, C4L and Y4L, We Are Change, InfoWars, WikiLeaks, Anonymous, and everybody else alive right now. You cannot change, you cannot reduce, you cannot subtract from this fact. The course of history is changed by Ron Paul. But whether the course of history will be changed for the better or not, this depends, not on Ron Paul nor anyone on his side of the fence. It depends on the elder, richest elite in the globalist new world order, because unless they surrender, then there will be a global revolution what the New World Order has long prepared for in the form of World War III. Potential Results Post-2012 Election I have often written elsewhere about the twin dimensions of heaven and hell beyond our own. Suffice it to say, I take it as common knowledge by now that some places at some times are better or worse than others at the same time, or even in the same place at a different time. This is due to the presence or absence of one or both of these extra dimensions beyond our own. When the situation is good, the heaven dimension is at play, and when things are bad, it is the hell dimension that is closer at hand. These observations in themselves are obvious enough to anyone. However, understanding how and why things are sometimes good here, other times bad there, etc., requires patience. It takes a long time to fully understand the cycles and patterns behind natural events. For example, in the year 1999, many people believed that the world would spontaneously end on midnight January 1st, 2000. There was a strong superstition that the millennium date would hearken in the so-called end of days, prophesied by every religion ever dreamt up by humanity. It did not. Instead, on May 5, 2000, 
seven planets, including Earth and the Moon, aligned with the Sun in the constellation Taurus, the Grand Cross, and no Earth-shattering event occurred. So, in frustration that the Earth did not just explode of its own accord, the New World Order cabal staged the election of October 2000 by Fox News announcing the Florida vote count too close to call, and thus forcing a protracted recount process, after which the Supreme Court simply appointed George Bush Jr. to the office of U.S. President, in spite of the recount never being completed. Then, on September 11, 2001, they staged a false flag terrorist attack on the USA, and the rest has become indelibly blooded into the pages of history. Through this series of events, we can clearly watch the wax and wane, the rise and fall of good and evil, as the heaven and hell dimensions have crossed through into our own, either more or less at the various points in time. Between the seven planetary Grand Cross of 5-5-2000 and the alignment of the Earth, Sun, and Galactic Core in the direction of the constellation Sagittarius on December 21, 2012, the heaven and hell dimensions have been approaching their maximum amount of effect and influence on our own reality here on Earth. From the 21st of December this year until April 15, 2029, these heaven and hell dimensions will be waning away and diminishing their influence on this reality we experience here on Earth. Finally, after April 15, 2029, they will have completely split apart due to the event of the asteroid Apophis 99942 colliding with the Earth in one reality on that date. Divergent Paths in Future Reality because we can measure the cycling changes of good and evil, what is called karma in the Orient, or morals in the Occident, as they occur naturally affecting events in our reality on Earth from behind the scenes, so to speak, we can make predictions about what event will follow from what event if we are presented with an initial more or less optionally binary in nature form of choice to start with. If, for example, we can say X in reality translates to good in the higher dimension, or that Y in reality is worse or more evil and pulled toward the lesser dimension, within a system where realities X and Y can overlap and are not mutually exclusive, then we can formulate these out to decipher how they would each and all relate to one another over a fixed duration of time. Thus, there is good X and worse X, which is XY, and evil Y and better Y, which is YX. So we can see that in a cycle, these proceed from one to another over a fixed duration, such that X leads to XY to YX to Y, and then back the way it came, such that from Y to YX to XY to X, and then back again to Y. Now if we can say X and Y are not mutually exclusive, we can formulate two currents braided into one another such that if one begins on X1, the other begins on Y2. And we may assume they both recycle throughout their respective patterns at the same rate over the same fixed duration. Thus X1 to Y1 to X1, etc. would occur simultaneously to y2 to x2 to y2, etc., and vice versa. Now draw a flat timeline between these intertwining dimensional supersymmetric string dimensions, and where they peak and trough, converge and diverge, to and from this middle path occur the patterns formed in our own reality as heaven and hell conflict here over time. So let's start on May 5th, 2000, and end on December 21, 2012. If X1 and Y1 at the start, then Y2 and X2 at the start, and then so forth and so on until the end. Romney wins the Republican nomination. Romney versus Obama equals the New World Order wins. The difference between free market capitalism and revolutionary multinational socialistic communism 
is, as I say, not in terms of their goal. They both believe they're doing good in attempting to establish an ideal utopia. However, again, as I have said, they have different ways of getting to that goal. The tactics used by free market capitalism, as Ron Paul and the Austrian Economics School define it, include only anti-racketeering laws alone, leaving the rest of all economic business dependent only on sound money, or solid coin currency. The tactics used by socialist communism are far worse, and opposed to the tactics of free market capitalism as well. The tactics employed by socialist communism are, as already mentioned, revolution and multinationalism. Under Barack Hussein Obama's administration as U.S. President, we have seen countless nations in the Middle East and Africa overthrow their national government's officials, countless European and formerly Soviet nations declaring insolvency as their central banks call in their debt, and in the USA the formation of the homeless Occupy and anti-tax Tea Party movements. All of these activities have been met with a wet blanket response from the U.S. President, who has been busy enough gossiping about green energy this and metrosexual marriage amendments that, while remote-controlled drone bombing them and crossing off enemies from his list. His presidency is defined by the looming shadow of massive tax hikes due to the continued bottomless war chest and the ongoing legislational attempt at state supply-side funded federal-level government mandated universal health care the universal joke called Obamacare. The threat of what he may be capable of during his second term is second only to the threat of a Mitt Romney presidency. Because Mitt Romney is both a Republican and not the incumbent, he has no chance of winning against Democrat incumbent Barack Obama if their platforms are compared Romney is everything bad ever said falsely about Ron Paul incarnated. He is an unelectable racist and he hates the poor. The pattern over at least the last seven presidents with Ronald Reagan are for two terms following D, Jimmy Carter, then eight-year Bill Clinton D, following one term R, George Bush Sr., then one term D, Obama, following two term R, Bush Jr., infers that in this trend, Obama has the possibility to win a second term also, depending on if he has a weak Carter or Bush Sr. or a strong Reagan-Clinton-Bush Jr. voter turnout. The New World Order appointed him. He was chosen to take the Democrat nomination over current appointee to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, at the 2008 Bilderberg meeting. So the New World Order may decide his fate. They would very much like to pit him against a weaker candidate from the other party and let him win a second term. Unfortunately, the reality of the situation is preventing them from being able to pull this sham off. The elder members of this rich elite cabal of globalists have got no idea how justifiably pissed off the real people of the world were after the stolen election of 2000 that led to eight years of the autocratic and tyrannical W administration. We will not tolerate either a failure by our government to obey the will of the people of this nation in the 2012 election, nor will we accept the imposition onto our living body of the innate evil of martial law. If Mitt and Obama are the two candidates, then there is no lesser evil. Both equally spell certain doomsday. Both belong to the New World Order, and their plans employ only the tactics of socialist communism.